Hey guys, can I show you a real quick magic trick? Pull over to the side for just a second. We don't block. Watch, it. Watch this. I'm going to print this card out of my phone, pull the card off the screen, and give it to you. Who wants to receive the card? Okay, I have nothing in this hand, but nothing in this hand. Now watch closely. That's for you. What the hell? <laughs> can I show you another trick? Come here. You can all participate in this one, okay? You hold this card so all of you can read. You're going to read the triangles out loud, one triangle at a time, on three. <laughs> okay. On three. Nice and loud. One, two, three. Paris in the spring, uh, bird in the hand, once in a lifetime. You got them wrong. Oh. You can't see your mistakes? No. First one says Paris in the, the spring. Oops. Bird in the, the hand. Oh, damn. Once in a, a lifetime. Do you see it? Oh, yes. Do you see how easily you can be deceived by things that are right in front of your face? Let me show you another magic trick. Is that okay? Sure. This one involves a few questions. Are you a good person? Okay. Let's see if, let's see if you're mistaken. Have you ever told a lie? Ever? Yes. What do you call people who tell lies? So what are you? Liar. Have you ever taken something that doesn't belong to you, even something small like candy, ever? Yes. yes. What do you call people who steal? Thief. That's right. So what are you? Thief. You're a lying thief. Oh. Have your parents ever punished you? Yes. yes. That means you haven't always honored your father and your mother. So let's examine what we learned about you based on those three questions. You're a liar, a thief, disobedient, rebellious. Is that a good person? No. So you're not a good person. Your eyes deceived you. And if you died today and God judged you, would you be innocent or guilty? Guilty. guilty. And should God let guilty people into heaven? No. So where would you have gone if you had died yesterday since you're not going to heaven? No. You said it, I didn't. I didn't tell you you're going to hell. I just asked you simple questions, right? But your answer is true, but you don't have to go there. God did something so you can still be forgiven even though you broke his laws. What did God do for you to forgive you? What did Jesus do for you? Died for us. On the cross. Do you know what was going on on the cross? What was happening to, so that your sins can be forgiven? So let me explain to you in a little slightly deeper explanation because you'll like this. It's really important. God will punish every sin. If he punished you for your sins, you would end up in hell like you said. But if he punished Jesus for your sins, guess what? You're forgiven. Your sins have already been dealt with by Jesus dying in your place. He was your, he was your substitute. He was your sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice. He was the perfect Lamb of God who was slain for the sins of the world. Okay, but because Jesus died for your sins, does that mean you automatically go to heaven or is there something you need to do in response? What do you have to do in response? Anybody? That's a right answer, by the way. What do you have to do in response? I can't right now. I'll tell you. I will tell you. I'm not here to make you feel bad. I'm, I, I want to tell you the answers. Jesus said in John 6, 47, he who believes in me has everlasting life. What do you have to do? In God? Jesus, specifically. God is a trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Each one is God, but there's only one God. Of those three, who died on the cross for you? Jesus. In John 3.36 it says, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. He who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. So who must you believe in? The Son, Jesus, that's right. Faith in the Son is what saves you. Now, it seems pretty clear to me that 10 minutes ago before I talked to you, you did not know how to go to heaven. But now you know, you've heard. This message is called the gospel, the good news of what Jesus did for us. Do you believe this gospel, this good news that, of Jesus dying on the cross for you? So, if you make a commitment to follow God, if you, if you believe the gospel and you want to follow Jesus, you can be saved. Would you like to make a public decision right now to follow Jesus? It's going to be real simple. I'm just going to ask you four simple questions to make sure you understand what you're doing and then pray for you to receive Jesus. Is that okay? All of you? Okay, first, what's your name? Carlos. Carlos? Kotara. Kotara? How do you spell that? Kotaro. Kotaro. Okay. Jessica. Jessica? Jessica. C-H-E-S-K-A. 
Francesca. Okay. Jada. Jada. How do you spell that? J A Y D A. Okay. So here are the four, four questions. Do you agree that you've sinned against God? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty for your sins? Yes. Do you believe he then rose again on the third day? Do you commit to believe in Jesus and obey him forever and ever? Okay, I'm going to pray for you. Is it okay for me to put my hand on your shoulder? Yes. And can you put his hand on your shoulder? Heavenly Father, would you please receive these four young people into your kingdom? They've just heard and obeyed the gospel and believed the gospel, understood the gospel for the first time. Would you please wash away their sins by Jesus' blood, transform them into a new creation through the gospel? Would you please send them into the world as ministers of the gospel and let their life so shine that you, Father, and Jesus and the Holy Spirit receive the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, guys, it's really that simple. Simple faith in Jesus as you repent of your sins is how you're saved, okay? What does it mean to repent? And I want to make sure we define our terms. What's that? To get me. So yes, but it simply means to change your mind. Let's say you have a habit of disrespecting your teacher, and that's, that's a sin. To, to, to repent means you change your mind, that you say, I shouldn't do that. But you haven't done anything yet. You haven't even gone to class yet. To get rid of it means you stop the behavior. But the repent means you've just agreed that that's wrong and that you will commit to fight that behavior. It's the commitment to fighting sin. It's not the actual success, but it should produce success in fighting sin, okay? So repent of your sins and believe in Jesus because Jesus is Lord, Master. He tells us what's right and wrong. And um, do you guys already go to a church somewhere? Where do you go? Uh, I go to a church in Torrance. What's the name of it? Uh, we're renting um, we're renting a church called the Masonic Lodge. We're renting a place right now. Okay, what's the name of the church that you... Uh, uh, just the Church of Christ. Church of Christ. Is it like a lot, part of the Los Angeles Church of Christ? Uh, it's part. Of, it's like part of the Iglesia de Cristo, which is the. Ah, oh, INC. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's deal with one really important issue. Who is Jesus, right? Because you need to believe in Jesus to be saved. But you need to believe in the real Jesus. For instance, let me give you an example. Jehovah's Witnesses believe that Jesus is not God, that he's just an angel, right? So. It matters who Jesus is, right? Do you believe the Bible is true? Okay. I'm going to show you Titus 1, verses 3 and 4. You tell me what it says, okay? Titus 1. Read that nice and loud for me, 3 and 4. But has in due time manifested his word through preaching, which was committed to me according to the commandment of God our Savior. Okay, keep going. Four. To Titus, a true son in our common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. Okay, so Jesus Christ is Savior, right? But it says God is our Savior. So who is Jesus Christ? Savior? He's God. Oh. God is the Savior, and Jesus is the Savior. So who is Jesus? Our Savior. He's God. The INC does not believe that. So, Titus 1, verses 3 and 4. D do yourself a favor. Go to Google and search the Deity of Christ verses. There's much more than this. Romans 9, 5. I'll give you one more, okay? Because all of eternity rests on who you believe Jesus to be. Okay? Read 5. Of whom are the fathers, and from whom, according to the flesh, Christ came, who is over all the eternal blessed God. Amen. Who is Jesus, who is Christ, the eternally blessed God. Okay? There's much more than this, explaining that Jesus is God. So, I'm talking to you because I love you, and I want you to go to heaven. And the only way to go to heaven is to believe in Jesus, the, the real Jesus. The one who is God in the flesh, who died for you. If you believe in the Iglesia Ni Cristo, INC Jesus, you're not saved. Because INC believe he's not, he's not God. Okay? So I know it sounds like your family is involved in the INC, right? And that's going to be a huge challenge to you. But there's a cost to following Jesus, is that right? And it may mean that your family is going to reject you. It may mean that they'll hate you. But Jesus said, he who loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. 
right? So um, I'm going to give this to you. My name is Tony. My email's in there. Please reach out to me. Send me an email if you have any questions, okay? Do you guys know Isaiah 9-6? It's a very famous verse. I'll, I'll read it to you. Okay. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. So a child is born, and his name, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Think about this. Mighty God, Everlasting Father is going to be born as a child. So who is Jesus? He's God. I just showed you three different verses or passages that shows that Jesus is God. And there are hundreds more. <laughs> okay? So I love you guys. Um, do you all go to the INC church? The ones who don't go to INC church, do you already go to church? So, check out these churches. They're listed here, okay? So go to a good Christian church, not a Catholic church, okay? Thank you so much for talking to me. God bless you guys.